improving your score relatively quickly is actually pretty possible for grammar and math. And that's just because of how the sections are played out and how they're built. Because they're so concept heavy in all of their questions, if you just figured out all the concepts and memorize them fully, you would put yourself above like almost 95% of people in terms of your score, right? And not only can you actually learn it quickly, there are actually specific rules and shortcuts because of how concept heavy they are that you can boost your score pretty quick and you can see results as a result of using those tips quickly. All right, so hi, I'm Karthik. These are SAT math and grammar tips, tricks, strategies. All right, let's get right into it. Okay, so first thing, SAT grammar, right? When you're learning for SAT grammar, your whole idea should be like, do I know every single one of this like grammar rules specifically? Do I have it memorized? Can I like bring it up exactly on how every single thing works? If you can't do that, that should be your number one priority. Every single grammar rule and general concept. And what I mean by general concept is a lot of things tested on the SAT um, for grammar aren't specifically related to the idea of using those rules, right? They're not specific grammar rules. Like a question could be grammatically correct, but they want you to pick the most concise one, right? That's an example. They hate redundancy, right? Uh, one other example is like when they want you to pick like the main idea, they want it to fit with the rest of the paragraph better. They don't care about gram uh, grammar or style. They just want it to like fit with the paragraph with the logical flow of details, right? So that's what they're looking for in questions where you're looking for a sentence order, right? They are looking for a logical flow of details. They don't care about the specific rule, right? Th that's an example of general concepts. But if you don't know all of those and you haven't got those all memorized and why they're applicable and what specific rule sets they have. Like if you don't know every purpose of a comma and how they're used to combine or separate or how you can use them and what cases they're absolutely necessary, like knowing all of those specific rules for every grammar concept tested should be your first priority. Go on Khan Academy, right? Go through every single SAT grammar video on, and especially the ones that you don't know. You don't have to go through every video if it's something that you do have memorized fully, but this is like a number one pitfall that I see is that students don't have all of them memorized and then just leave it up to chance. Why would you leave any of these points up to chance when you can do this right now and guarantee that you know it for the future, right? And doing this is going to help you fully understand the rules so you don't have to use your ear when answering these kinds of questions and you can actually just go right into it right um you should externally research the rule a little bit outside of Khan Academy just to make sure that you have everything and know how they're applied and that's especially true for things like idioms right that are tested on the SAT um so and this is all so that you can use the Beth's method for uh, tackling grammar questions, which is this find, apply, and answer method, right? It's basically this idea that all you have, you realistically have to do is find the concepts or concept that is testing, you know, apply those rules and then answer them, right? Okay, so for SAT grammar practicing, right, you should focus on the one skill out of all of the skills that you do the worst on, right? Because it's the one that you do the worst on that needs the most improvement, right? And needs, and as a result, like doing practice will actually benefit that. So it needs the most practice, but also it takes the least amount of actual hours of practice, right? It's probably won't, it's probably not going to be hours to actually see an improvement if you already know the rule. If you don't know the rule, you're essentially guessing in the dark and you should do that first. But practicing it actually helps you like learn it better. And on top of that, learn it quicker if it's a lower accuracy skill, right? So let's say you always get like semicolon questions wrong. You practice like 20 semicolon questions. The ability, your ability to answer those types of questions in the future goes up radically if you just like always get a comma question right, practice 20 comma questions, like your ability still stays the same because you're already relatively good at it. So practice all the ones that you struggle with the most and use Khan Academy for it, right? Go on to the sections, go on to the problems where the videos are, and then keep running them until you achieve mastery and that you've used this method, right? You use the apply method where you apply the rule and then you find the right thing where it applies and then you figure out the right answer, right? You applied the rule by figuring out what it is. You differentiated it between the different kinds of like rules and made sure that this was the right case. And then you picked your right answer choice. Make sure you're using that method and getting it right with that method. Cause that's the true marker of, of success in that section, right? Cause if you're using your ear, you're not actually getting the question, right? You're actually just guessing. And it's like a 50, 50, if you use your ear, cause you obviously know some aspects are incorrect, but some aspects might be correct that you look over when you use your ear, or you might answer them right if you use your ear. So don't rely on your ear, use this method and get it correct with this method. And that's hard to do. It's hard to push yourself to do that. But that's what it takes to get this kind of score. If you if you want that, this should definitely be your priority. Okay, 
specific tips. I already talked about they love conciseness, right? But one key aspect of conciseness, right? When they ask you to reduce um, a sentence to like make it more sound, um, figure out that they make sure that first of all, they don't have an objective, right? Because they might have an objective and they say like change it so that it fits with the main idea. Then throw all this out the window and it should be focused on just that main idea and the fact that it's grammatically correct, of course. And that goes into my second point. If they don't have a purpose for why you're changing something and they just want it more concise, um, they may not even tell you. They might just underline it and have changes and no changes. Answer choice A. Um, focus on this idea. You're trying to figure out the most grammatically correct way. And that includes pronouns, right? Pronouns are the ones that they love to mess up the most often because a lot of times if you concise like a sentence, like you made it, make it way shorter, the pronouns all of a sudden don't make sense because it doesn't make sense what you're like referencing, right? So if I say this does that, it doesn't make any sense what this is or what that is, right? And it's not referenced in the previous sentence properly enough so that I know what it is. So that could be a potential issue. And that's, it, it's not necessarily grammatically incorrect, right? It doesn't stick out as grammatically incorrect. And you might even know what it's referring to as a result of the previous sentence, right? So that's one thing that they love to do for conciseness is they love to put things like that. And any punctuation related questions, focus on independent and dependent clauses. You should be able to identify the independent and dependent clauses in the original passage. And then if you hypothetically change it around, right, what is the new independent and dependent? And is that actually allowed, right? You can't really combine two independent clauses with just the comma. You need a fanboys there as well, right? So figure out things like that and make sure it works. Okay, for SAT math, this literal same framework applies, but there's only small differences. And I'll go over all the differences because it's quite literally the same learning and practicing method, right? You learn all the major concepts on Khan Academy. You watch all those videos and also ex use external resources for them, especially like they're very good and they're very well made and other people have amazing ones. But figure out how they're applied with harder examples with the harder examples portion, right? They'll normally be easy example, hard example. Your priority should be watching the hard example if you already know the skill and watching both if you like don't feel very familiar with the skill, right? Practice leveling up your skill in the Khan Academy practice, right? So what I mean by that is you're going to like go on the skill, right? And it's going to be like one out of four. Um, and mastery is where you get all of them, right? But the questions actually get progressively harder every time you like get the easier ones done, right? So go on the easiest category, get them all right, and then level them up by uh, do taking it again, because the questions become a little harder this time. So then try it and then keep trying it until it gets to mastery and then try it one more time and make sure you continue that mastery. And if you can do that, that's when you know that you're truly good to move on to a different problem. And obviously the same thing applies that you should focus on the problem that's your hardest and then maybe like your second hardest. And if you have time, your third hardest, like as much as you can do, but make sure you achieve full mastery in that one type before you move on to a different type of question or you're just wasting your time ultimately. Okay. Some specific tips, right? Look for the fastest way to solve the problem. In algebra, there's often the case where they don't ask you to solve for the variable, but they ask you to solve for like a an expression. So like 2x plus 12, what is 2x, right? And there'll be 2x plus 12 equals 12. So then we know 2x is zero, right? But the idea is, is a lot of times they actually don't want you to physically like subtract the 12, divide the two and figure out like, oh, like um, x is negative six, like, oh, and it's actually negative 12. Now I think about it, right. But um, they, they, they don't want you to like subtract it out, and then try to figure out like what the answer is, right. And then say like, oh, because you can mess yourself up with that, right. You can say like, oh, wait, uh, 2x plus 12 equals 12 is 2x negative 12. Oh, what is it, right? No, 2x is still zero. And it regardless, like if x is zero or not, right. We don't want to solve for the variable there. We don't want to focus on what exactly we're adding focus on how I can simplify my ex the expression that they've given me into the answer, right? So if the answer is just 2x, figure out if I can just isolate 2x somehow or divide the whole equation by something that gives me 2x, right? The SAT loves to do that for the basic algebra problems. It just takes away your time and you can do it a lot faster if you know this technique, right? Um, highlight known and unknown information portions when you have hard questions. And that basically means like every time you have a hard word problem and you don't know where to start, right? Start by writing then all the information that you do know, all the information that you don't know, and the information you need to get, right? And then continuously try to push all the unknown information into the known category by solving for them with what you do know, right? Because it's always possible 
from what you do know to solve. And if you don't think it is and you are missing a variable or you have two variables and you're unable to figure out how to get to that end information, then your goal should be like, what information have I missed from the problem? Because you probably missed something if you constantly feel that that's the case, right? Don't get sucked into this sunk cost fallacy. And it's this idea that you spend a lot of time on a question and it's like, oh, I only need one more minute to get this question right. That's a sunk cost fallacy. It's actually going to hurt you. What you want to do is spend the allotted time per question, which, you know, divide the total amount of minutes by the question. And that's how much you should be spending per question. And if you go over that, just skip it right? Just go, unless it's going to take you only like 30 seconds more, then go for it. But if it's a really hard question, you don't know the answer and it's not like in the, you just have to do more exploration to find the answer instead of just direct solving. And you know that you're going to get the answer. If you have to think about getting the answer at all, instead of just knowing that you're going to get the answer, that's this idea that you have to skip the question and then move on and come back to it later. Right. Um, ultimately it's very possible to improve, right? With this strategy, what you're going to do is you're going to make an improvement. That's it's honestly pretty reasonable to do in a day. Like it only takes like a couple of hours. Don't stress yourself too much over putting as much time as possible now, right? Your priority should be doing that work, but also sleep and diet over anything else. Like don't sacrifice on your sleep to improve more. You're actually going to just end up doing well, uh, worse, right? Um, if you want a free SAT consultation where I can talk about any tips or any questions that you might have, as well as if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one time with me in a private community where I have a bunch of resources that you can use and a bunch of things that you can do to help yourself, help other people in the community and get, you know, one-on-one -on -one personalized time with me, apply in the link in the description because I only have a limited amount of spaces left and I can't afford to like get everybody in the community because I only have so much one-on-one -on -one time, right? So my time is limited. So apply. And if you're accepted, you know, that's going to be an opportunity for you to improve. Thank you guys so much. And I hope you learned something today.